My father made furniture from found objects. He was a street sweeper and a curator of a rubbish tip and he collected things. So I come from a family of collectors and my father used to collect all these interesting timbers and, and objects and, and transfer them into and transform them into um, furniture for the house. When it comes to, to working with my sculptures, I like to use um, timber, basically, just the wood surfaces, the aged qualities of the timber really interest me. But I like steel as well because it's more a permanent material and when I make something I know it will last forever and I like the idea that I can use it and leave it outside as well. This is where I store all the materials that I use to make my sculptures from and they're pretty worthless sort of things really. To most people they'd be horrified that I was collecting all this junk. But you can see how I use it, you can see what I do with it and for me it's an inspiration. Like even, for example, these legs here, you can see that they're already animated just by the way that I'm holding them. It really looks like that, that cat is in motion. This is the stuff that interests me. Um, I found this base, I found this shape, I'm not even sure what it is, but I thought to myself it resembled a bird, and then I found this really nice little hook that I thought could work fabulously well as the beak and the neck of the bird. And then I've also got things like that which could be the, the legs and the feet of the bird as well. So you can see how that would go together when I welded it. I can't wait to use that for something. Could be even the head of an echidna, a spiny anteater with it. Uh, uh, like a point going out there and a lot of spikes sticking up behind it could be quite beautiful. It, yeah, with the dogs they're fantastic because you can move them around, you can have them inside, you can have them sitting watching TV and then you can take them outside and they can be in the backyard. So, a bit like a real dog. They're not site specific, there's no doubt about that, they're just objects that I've made. And in some ways they're, you know, they have personalities and they, they you know, change the flavour of a room when they're in a room. This is Winston the Bulldog and uh, the reason I made him is that I actually was making a, a pig for the, for the Chinese year of the pig and I had the basic shape happening which is this, this big barrel and look you can see it's quite pig-like but I couldn't ever get the face right and then I started fiddling with these different pieces and I ended up with this little bulldog and I thought that's so nice I'm, I'm going to go with that I won't worry about doing the pig and um, I think he's one of my favourite pieces in actual fact. This is my work studio, this is the bench that I work on and there's some of my tools over there and a few things that I've got. Bicycle seats, they come in every shape and size, every form, I suppose it's to, to actually shape everybody's bottom, you know. And thongs, boxes of thongs and particularly pink thongs work fabulously well for the tongues of dogs, so I've got a lot of those. In actual fact, one of my students gave me that. Those ones, there's another one. I've got a couple of metal dogs that I've made here and I've made these out of found objects that I've cast in metal, in aluminium, and then I've welded, welded them together. And you can see that this one's a cheery dog and he's actually picked up a bone, which is a spanner. You can see from the, the way he's holding onto it that he won't let go, it's definitely his for the day. And then I've got another little dog down here that I've made out of bits of driftwood and all sorts of interesting pieces and he's having a sniff, as most dogs do, just sniffing the ground, wandering around. But they're solid as a rock. You can actually climb on top of them. Not that you'd want to do that, but you know, it's just part of the act. <laughs> I think that's the secret that keeps artists stimulated and keep moving ahead, is the desire to, to achieve perfection. But because we doubt ourselves all the time, even though we've, you may feel like one day that you've achieved perfection, the next day it's not as perfect as it was the day before. So um, I suppose I'm striving for perfection, but, but I, I won't know if I ever achieve it. <laughs>